In this how-to stats video, I'm going to talk about Fisher's LSD. It's a very powerful post hoc test that should be used much more frequently than it currently is. So a little review. Fisher's LSD, uh, in long form, it's Fisher's least significant difference test. And it's a two-step procedure, which means that first you need to conduct a between groups ANOVA. And I'm only going to talk about between groups in this uh, to start. Uh, and then, if the between groups ANOVA is statistically significant, then you can follow up with several independent sample t tests to help uncover where the differences are between the means. And it's not quite exactly just the regular independent sample t test. The only difference is that there's a pooled error, t error term in the Fisher's LSD uh, t tests. So that's why it's a two step procedure. First, you do the ANOVA. If it's significant, follow up with Fisher's LSD. Now, this post hoc test, if you look in textbooks uh, and on the internet, you'll find that people argue that Fisher's LSD is not good and you should not use it because it does not protect from inflated type 1 error rates. So you can't be confident that you're testing your hypotheses at an alpha of 0 0.05. You can find that in a long, in a long list of uh, references. Now, this actually isn't completely true, that Fisher's LSD won't help protect uh, your family-wise error rate. Fisher's LSD actually works fine when dealing with three means. Now, that's a very special case, uh, but it's a very commonly seen case in applied research. Many, on many occasions, you'll come across an ANOVA with just three means. When you have more than four means, however, then Fisher's LSD breaks down. So when you have three means, it works fine. When you have four or more, your family-wise error rate increases. Now, this was proven analytically by Hayter in 1986. And if you look on page 1002, he proved that when you have k equal three means, uh, the alpha rate stays at 0 0.05. The family-wise error rate stays at 0 0.05. Uh, in the case of three means. Now you can see that when you have four means, however, the family-wise error rate jumps up pretty quickly up to 0.122. Now these are maximum uh, family-wise error rates that Hayter identified. Uh, so in the case of three means, he proved analytically that it should work, uh, but with four means it breaks down. Now empirically, Seaman, Levin, and Serlin in 1991 examined this empirically through simulations and based on their simulation research they concluded that the family-wise type 1 error probabilities for the Newman Cools and the Fisher LSD procedure procedures do not exceed the nominal alpha level when k equal 3 so there's analytical support with uh, there's analytical support with Hayter and then empirical research uh, by Seaman and there's also uh, there are there are other uh, researchers who have looked at this empirically and found the same uh, effects. Now, in addition to helping protect you, uh, protect your alpha, your family-wise error rate at 0 0.05, another attractive consideration associated with Fisher's LSD is that it's actually a fair bit more powerful than alternatives. And Fisher's LSD is actually, on average, at least 8% more powerful uh, than Tukey's HSD, and if you frame power in a different context, it could be as much as 20% uh, or 25% more powerful than commonly used post hoc tests like Tukey's HSD, which is a much more much too conservative test if you want to uh, keep your family-wise error rate at 0 0.05. So it's protecting you, and it's also giving you more power. So it's uh, two uh, serious bonuses associated with Fisher's LSD. Now, all this research, uh, they don't really explicitly discuss repeated measures ANOVA in this context, but I can't see why the logic and the empirical research wouldn't extend to the repeated measures ANOVA. So, in my opinion, you should be able to use uh, Fisher's LSD when you have three means in a repeated measures ANOVA as well. Uh, and uh, use yeah, just use the Fisher's LSD to help uh, do your post hoc tests in that case. Now here are references for the uh, findings uh, reported in this uh, presentation. We have Hader, 1986, 
who published his work in the Journal of the American Statistical Association, and then Levin et al. published a paper. This isn't the empirical simulation research paper. This is a bigger paper where they discussed Fisher's LSD in a more global context and suggested that it could be applied in a number of different ways, and not just comparing means. And here's the uh, Seaman et al. 1991 paper that uh, did the empirical simulation research to show that Fisher's LSD does uh, keep alpha rate at 0 0.05. Uh, so I encourage you to use Fisher's LSD in the uh, ANOVA case of three means and disregard people's blanket criticisms of uh, the Fisher's LSD. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time.